Hi there guys, this is 12i. This is predator prey models building on from your systems of coupled linear differential equations. So this is really your applications and interpretations part here. Um, and they go on through this investigation to talk about populations of fish and sharks. And you can think that those two populations are dependent on each other. So we'll change over time dependent on the other population size as well, which is all exactly what we've been dealing with. So sometimes these are called Lot Lotka Volterra equations. And so what I'm going to do is discuss a little bit about how we set these equations up. And then the particular example which they go through in this investigation, there is not an example here for 12i. So we really have to go through this investigation. And it's pretty nice, I have to say, this one. This is obviously quite complicated, but we'll use Euler's method to solve these ones and to look at those populations over a period of years and then to graph those things as well. So we'll see those fluctuating populations. Really quite nice stuff. So I've just copied a little bit of Investigation 7 into here. So let's go through this kind of line by line, really. So it says when a population X of size X increases at a steady rate alpha, proportional to the size of the population, and that's a kind of a big if really, we can write the differential equation describing its rate of growth as the change over time is proportional to, so is proportional to X, so we can change that into alpha X there. OK, so we've just changed the words there into this particular statement here. Now, again, that's kind of a big if um, that we're just saying that the population size is, just depends on um, the, the size of the population, that the rate of change depends on the size of the population. So I don't know, say, for example, A was two and your previous population was 100, then the next year, for example, might be the population might be 200 and then it might be 300. Now you can argue that that's not particularly realistic because there's lots of factors which come into play here. Maybe there's a limited amount of resources for populations to grow or maybe populations are dependent on other populations as well. Say the growth of one population might be affected by the growth of a nearby population. Okay and that's obviously exactly how we're going to make this model more sophisticated. So it says now, suppose there's a different species. And we're talking about species here, but we might be talking about populations of countries as well. So suppose there's a different species um, with population size Y, and it's in competition with X. The rate of increase of X is now affected by the size of Y, such that as Y <coughs> increases, the rate of increase of X will diminish. OK, so they're making this more sophisticated by saying that the rate of increase for X now depends on the size of Y. So and they say it will diminish, so it will decline. So they're saying that this population growth, let's say previously it was two, is now dependent on the size of the population of Y. So if the population of Y, I don't know, is 200, then maybe B here, as then maybe it decreases, maybe B is, I don't know, maybe B is 0 0.1, for example. So this is some scale factor of the population. It depends on the size. It doesn't say that it depends on the rate of growth of Y. It just talks about the, um, the size of Y affecting X. So it's not dependent on dy dt. It's just Whatever the size of Y is, the population growth of, growth of X depends on that size of Y. OK, so that's why we're saying some amount of Y here that it depends on. And so this could be potentially quite a small factor in this case, a small scalar. OK, so then it says as the population of Y increases, the rate of growth of X decreases as it depends on this thing here, which is what we basically talked about. OK, and then it says if Y is competing with X for some of the same resources, then the equation for the growth 
and the population of Y is likely to have a similar structure. Now we don't know what these constants are here, but again, we'd say that the Y dt is not just unchecked growth, so C times by Y, but it's kept in check by the size of the population of X by some factor there. So obviously if D is small, then the size of the population of X doesn't really matter too much, but if D is large, then that has a greater impact here. So that multiplied by Y. Okay, and just a little extension to this, it says, <clears throat> however, if species Y is a predator, species X is the prey, then the equation of this form might be more appropriate. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit. So it's saying that the population increase of this predator species will depend on the population size of the, um, the, the prey. So how much of the prey there is and some scaled version of that. So, you know, if there's a thousand uh, fish, for example, then it might have some scaled, scaled up factor there, maybe 0 0.1 of a thousand. I'm not sure what it is, but it's dependent on the size of the population of the um, prey. Multi uh, take away dy. So, so that would be, if you like, if it was, if there was no um, population x, then dy dt would simply be equal to minus dy. So it would be, this would be declining over time. So the population would be going down over time, but because obviously there's no prey. So, so obviously the population would decrease in size over time if there's absolutely no prey. But the increasing factor is if there's more prey, then we can say we've got Cx time, it's dependent on that size of the population, dependent on Cx. Now, um, this potentially could work. It's just that C here would be positive and D would be positive in this situation. And it's nice to keep those constants to be positive because um, essentially this is the same equation as this. It's just, of course, we've just made the, um, we've swapped around the signs really. So we're essentially trying to keep those, the C and the D, those constants positive. Okay, so let's look at the particular example here. So it's talking here about this population of fish and it's talking about finding two equilibrium positions. Now, these are not mentioned here. There is no little box to tell you how to work out equilibrium positions, but that's fairly straightforward. And then after that, we, uh, with the initial conditions, we then need to use Euler's method with an incredibly small step size, 0 0.02, and then we're going to take it up to three years. So I've just copied this one across and you can see in this question, they've already given you the formulas. You might be asked to explain them, of course, and obviously we've just talked through these things, but we can write these in other forms here. We can call this three X and one minus Y. We can call this one uh, y and x minus two. So we can just rewrite it in a different way. And so for the first part where it says find the two equilibrium positions for the populations of fish and sharks, well, that's when dx dt and dy dt are going to be equal to zero. So we're saying both dx dt and dy dt are going to have to be equal to zero. So what makes these two things equal to zero? Well, you can easily see that when x is zero, y is zero. Um, so when x is zero rather and y is zero, both of those two things is going to be zero. So one of your equilibrium positions is no fish and no sharks. So neither population is going to go very far if there is none of either. So that makes sense as a, an equilibrium position to start off with. And then also we can get a zero out if we make this bracket equal to zero here as well. So when y is equal to one, and likewise, when this bracket is equal to zero as well, so when x is equal to two. So there's the two equilibrium positions, and it would seem that when there's 2,000 fish and 100 sharks, so we've got uh, sharks in hundreds there, 
then that's the equilibrium position, which kind of sounds sounds a, a little silly to be honest, because you'd think you'd need a lot more fish than uh, shark. Uh, but there you go. That's what it's saying. That this, these are the two equilibrium positions. Okay, but it says initially there are three thousand fish and twenty sharks. So this here, <coughs> our condition we've got t is equal to zero, and x is equal to three because that's measured in thousands and y is equal to 0 0.2 so that's our initial position okay and now we're going to use Euler's method here with a step size of 0 0.02 and we're going to show the next step and so on okay so this is where it gets good and this is what i've done on the spreadsheet already so i've just kind of gone a step forward here and you can see that I've put in the initial conditions of 0, 3, and 0 0.2. And I've also put in here a formula, which is x is changes from the previous x value by doing the previous x value plus 0 0.02, that's the step in terms of time, times by uh, dx dt. And that was your dx dt, 3x minus 3xy. Check that one out again. We had 3x minus 3xy. And here again, we've got xy take away 2y. So you'll see that in the next one. So xy take away 2y is your dy dt there. There's the original dy, um, y value. There's the step length again. OK, so we've got our formulas in just like before. And I've just copied these ones down. And I've obviously copied these ones down as well. And I've gone up to, I've gone up to 3. Uh, I've gone up to 3 there. OK, so time is three. So we've got up to three years and you can see there's our years on this axis here and we can see what's happening with our two populations. So you can see that originally the fish population goes up to 7.5 ish. OK, so there's clearly not very many sharks and the system can sustain many more sharks. OK, so remember that our equilibrium positions were 2,000 fish and 100 sharks. So, um, so yeah, the system could sustain many more fish. Now, when we got to 100 sharks, you can see that that was an equilibrium position there. And, but as soon as the sharks started going slightly over there, we could see that the fish started to decline. OK, so because we're constantly dependent on the previous one, the population of the sharks was increasing and the population um, then of the fish was then started to decrease because there's more predators. And then, of course, you can see that as the predators rose over time, so they're still living, these predators, they're getting more and more hungry as the, the fish disappear, then you can see that the um, the sharks start to decline as their prey starts to decline. Okay, and they're still competing for very few fish, and of course the shark are dying off. Now, um, as soon as the shark die off, you can see that the fish start coming back again. So pretty amazing model, really. Now, I was kind of interested to see here how this would extend if we took it up beyond three years. So I just took the entire table a bit beyond here as well. And I took it up to 10 years. And you can see that we have these cycles here of increasing populations for the fish and then decreasing to almost nothing, completely overfished, if you like, or overeaten. And then the shark populations decline to next to nothing and the fish population comes back again. And of course, the shark population follows again. So really interesting models there. And it seems, I mean, you can comment on the real, reality of this, but you can see potentially over time that there's the system seems to sustain more and more fish, ever more fish, and seems to go down to ever lower lows, in fact, for the population. And you can imagine at some point that we'll get so low here that, in fact, we'll have no fish and the whole population will completely die out. So you can say over time that this is maybe not a realistic model and there's potentially more factors involved here. Um, I'm kind of interested to know if we put in that equilibrium position of zero, zero, we go, we're getting, we're getting no fish and no 
um, shark over that time. And then the equilibrium position, let's just check that one out as well, was 2,000 fish and was 100 shark. Let's just see what we get there. Right, so there's our equilibrium position. And if we can remain at equilibrium, it will stay at equilibrium here. So that's kind of interesting to see as well. So that does verify that in fact, 2,000 shark, sorry, 2,000 fish and 100 sharks um, are uh, create an equilibrium position in supposedly in this, in this eco ecosystem. Okay then guys, well, hopefully you found that a little interesting. And uh, I'm not gonna go through the rest of these things here. You can read those things through yourself, but I think I've gone through that pretty much. And the next exercise, 12, I is here. How many questions you've got? got? Three questions there. Yeah, three questions are quite extended questions there as well. So again, as ever, make sure that you get full amount of practice there. And then the last part of this chapter is to talk about second order differential equations. And again, here we're going to be using Euler's method uh, um, twice, essentially. Um, yeah, but that's the next video. Okay, good luck with the exercise and hope to see you back for the next one.